Alright, hey guys, welcome back to another video, and today we received the new 1.6.4 beta. This patch is about 10 gigabytes, it's 9.39 gigabytes to be uh, specific, and it has only a few, but they are very good changes. So, the link to the new beta patch will be down below, like always, and like always, uh, what's it called? Down below in the description, you can find a script. Everything I say, all links that are stated are going to be down there as well. And uh, in this video, like always, I'll be going over all the important changes, the minor changes and fixes, the bug fixes and crash fixes. They're always appreciated, but they will be in the patch notes, and the link to the patch notes will be down below if you want to go check out all of the changes. So let's get right into it. So first, we're going to do single player, multiplayer, and then both. This will probably be a very short video. Like I said, there's not too many changes, but let's get right to them. So the first single player one is they added a crown for Kazate Lords. So pretty much now every faction has uh, their own kind of set of uh, pretty much crowns or very, you know, high value helmets. So that's good to see. Uh, so now, you know, if you really want to, you know, kind of like role play a little bit and kind of have like the crown on, uh, depending on what faction you're on, you will, you have your own crown. Uh, next, this is actually a very big change. It is now possible for players to promote companions into nobles. Uh, with their own clan so now you can actually create your um, your companions can have their own clan and you can kind of actually build your kingdom instead of recruiting you know other clans obviously you st you're still you still want to recruit clans but this will uh, pretty much help improve kind of like the start of a kingdom and kind of just like you know making a kingdom thrive uh, and, then they, and then they states in order to use this feature the player must first be the leader of a kingdom have at least one fief have an active companion that is not a family member, have 20,000 dinars and 500 influence ready to spend for the promotion. So it is costly, but I think it will be worth it, especially late game and even when you just start your first uh, kingdom. Uh, and then they go, once the conditions are met by the player, they can initiate the dialogue with the companion about their promotion. The player will get, grant the companion one of their fiefs and will be able to name their clan. The newly created clan will be a tier two clan and receive a 50 relationship bonus with the player's clan. Very cool. I think this is a very, very good addition. It might sound small, but this is a very good addition. If people have been asking for it, I've been asking for it, and it's good to see that in the game. Next, they removed influence gained from donating troops to a clan member's party. So I think you can still get it if you do it to, um, what's it called? What's it called? To, to the uh, garrison. It's a very small amount of influence, but now you will not get it if you just do it to a party. Next, factions will no longer create armies if they are not at war. So you won't just see random war parties or random big, you know, armies just wasting pretty much, you know, all their influence, pretty much their food and all that, just running around for no reason. They will only do that if there is a war. Next, and well, lastly for single player, we have a few uh, changes to armor weights, troop skill levels, and other troop changes. The changes can be seen on the screen right now if you wish to pause. They're all a little bit minor, but they are kind of significant, so they are on the screen. Next, onto multiplayer. So this is kind of, um, you know, kind of a downfall, but it is what it is. Uh, there's not really much changes. There's only a couple of crash and bug fixes. They're on the screen right now. Um, they mostly, I personally think this patch um, doesn't have too much changes, but I think there's a lot of background to these changes because obviously it is almost 10 gigabytes. So there probably is a lot of background changes. The optimization might be better, like always, like after every other patch, but we'll see how that goes. Now, onto the last, onto both. So these are changes that are both in single player and multiplayer. First one, ballista improvements. So this is one of the stuff that you can use on top of the, uh, you know, not on top, but like on top of the castle or town, or, you know, if you're on the offensive side, all the way in the back. Uh, so they increased the fire rate of it. They decreased the flying curvature of it. They added a sight, make it easier to aim. Uh, improved AI usage minor animation tweaks and corrected the uh, ballista's bolts center of mass so what this will probably do is make them a lot more um you know deadly and with this um pretty much whenever you do start a siege you really really want to try your best to get rid of all of the um the enemies uh what's it called siege weapons right because if you don't and you leave a couple of these um you know up they're gonna you're gonna take a lot of uh losses in your numbers uh, next, attacks now take into account the relative movement speed between the attacker and the target when deciding if an attack will bounce or not. So some good physics cha physics changes and uh, it's good to see. Um, next, we have a system that ap approximates local superiority has now been implemented. So what this does is this helps AI agents to distinguish a nearby lone enemy that they can kill from a group of enemies. They can choose to fight or move forward. 
uh, to their assigned uh, tactical position in hopes of better odds. So pretty much better AI, they'll choose their fights better. If they see somebody that they could take out very easily, they're gonna go for that person instead of the bigger army. Um, good to see. Uh, and then also a minor random element was also introduced that slightly influences decision scores. So don't know exactly what that is, but it was added. Lastly, like always, we have modding changes, and the changes are coming in uh, with some really good, in my opinion, ex like proper explanation and documentation. And as far as I've seen, uh, some of the um, I went all around the forums to the modding section. The modders look like they are enjoying the constant flow of changes. Obviously, there's still a lot more work to be done, but it is going in the right direction, patch after patch. And uh, that pretty much does it for all the changes. Again, it wasn't that uh, too many changes, but I think they were pretty significant. So last time I end this video in the same way I end most of my update videos, uh, I want to thank the developers for staying active and bringing good changes. Uh, also, I have two videos down below. If you're getting crashes or if you don't know how to actually get to this patch or revert to any other patch, there's two video links down below that can help you out. Also, um, I started a Patreon, well, kind of a long time ago. If you want to support it, support it. It's up to you. But uh, yeah, hopefully this video was informative and like always, stay safe.